now we've done that, I've just done the outside, well, the best I, well I'm not going to do it perfect because then you're going to get dirty again. But now I want to have a little sort out around in here, in the back, it's a bit, a bit dirty. But before I do that, I've got, because I've noticed I've got a bit of loss of power recently, now don't get me wrong, right, I hate cats and catalytic converters and all that and I usually remove them, but I haven't had a chance to remove it from this van yet. Now I'm 99% sure that it's getting a bit blocked up. We've got 200,000, well 199,312 miles on the, on the engine, on this van. And it's the original cat. It's, so it's a 200,000 mile cat basically. Um, I've just had to have the gearbox done. Things are starting to need to be done now. And I think the old cat's blocked up. There's a fair bit of ticking over and things like that. So I think it's getting a bit blocked. Now, I'm going to take the cat off. There's going to be a video of that coming up. I'm going to take the cat off and I'm going to put a straight bit of pipe there. But for the time being, because I don't want to damage my turbo or damage anything else by having a blocked up cat, it can have some effects, you know. A bit like an earthquake has effects on the surrounding buildings and things. So... I'm going to give some of this stuff a try. Now, I bought one and then I, and then I bought another one because I forgot. Um, so we've got this one here. Uh, it's a 10k boost uh, diesel particulate filter cleaner um, from the makers of the award-winning 10k boost. Well, it is 10k boost. Why is it from the award-winning? It is. I don't know. Anyway, so we got this. It's supposed to lubricate the fuel and clean out the particulate filters and all that rubbish. It sends lives out. Blah, blah, blah. And then I ordered another one, but I also ordered some injector cleaner as well while I was at it. Um, so I don't know which one is the injector, because I should have two bottles of um, particulate filter cleaner, as they call it, and then one bottle of injector cleaner. Um, so let's, let's get it undone. Yeah. Now this is the first bottle that I bought. I bought this one and realised it was supposed to come on the 23rd of February. So I thought, oh, well, that's a bit long, isn't it? So I'll order another one. Because I noticed in the shop, the bottles of these are £15. Just for this bottle, is £15 in a shop if you physically go and buy it. But on the internet, this was £8 and um, with free delivery. So I'm thinking to myself, why is it so cheap? So that's why I put it on the internet. But then it was, and then I realised it was going to come on the 23rd. So I bought this one which was also about £13, I think, in the, sh in the shop, but it was £6 on the internet with free delivery. This one was um, supposed to come the next day, which it did, which is today, but this also come the next day, so now I've got two. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put in... I think I'll put in this one first. I'll give this one a go. See, I don't want to put both of them in, because one, it'll be a waste, and two, I don't think it'll have any better effects. So I think I'll use this one, use one tank of fuel, then in the next tank, I'll put that one in, I think, and we'll see how it goes. Thank <laughs> you. 
first, I've just read what it says about this, so put this one in. It says, um, complete burn off, blah blah blah, uh, optimizes the cuts of the especially for seat driving. Add one bottle of 325 milliliters to a minimum of 40 liters of diesel for best results. Um, use in every third tank of fuel. So this one says use every third tank, whereas this one says. Uh, is this still 300? Oh, it's 265 milliliters. So this one's a bit smaller. And um, this one says, um, put the contents of the bottle into the fuel tank before filling with diesel. Uh, one bottle treats 40 to 60 liters of diesel fuel. Dosage recommended use one bottle every 3,000 miles. So this was every 3,000 miles, and that was every third tank. It's interesting. See, for me, three tanks. Hmm, that's one thing I've noticed. One of the reasons and one of the symptoms of a blocked cat or DPF or whatever you choose to call it um, is loss of power, loss of responsiveness and your fuel consumption, your economy will go up. Your fuel consumption will go up. Now I used to, I used to be out, because I do 98% motorway driving so we're talking, you know, all the time and I noticed that I could do six days of 127 miles a day um, and I'd do just over half a tank of diesel um, but now it takes me to do those same that same amount of miles 127 miles a day for six days and I do one tank so I used to get like around 800 something miles to to three quarters of a tank um, and then, but now it's about 500 miles to one tank, so it's pretty, uh, it's not very good. So 3,000 miles is nothing. I could do, I could put a bottle of this in every time I change my oil, because I change my oil every 3,000 miles. cleaned it up a little bit got uh, one bag of screws that fell out over there and I kept meaning to tidy them all up but I never did one bag of rubbish one bottle of Grant's whiskey blimey didn't even know that was in there don't know how long it's been in there 40% blimey I like a bit of Grant's one bottle of Ribena and uh, yeah all nice and tidy Gonna make it a bit better um, at some point when I get a chance, probably. Uh, but for now, that'll do. It's tidier than it was. It was a mess. Now you forgot we got a pair of chainsaw chaps, good ones, winter ones, and an oven that I forgot about as well. That was in here. Don't know how long that had been in there for. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go and wash them chaps though, because they're a bit, uh, a bit muddy. When I was cutting down trees in the mud. So uh, yeah. What's that? Let's see what else we can find. I've got some cutting discs there in the air, so I'll be able um, I'll be able to do that. Um, finish off my thing. I'll be able to finish off my bracket here. When I was out there washing the van, I managed to break my bloody tripod. So, if anyone, if any of you are feeling particularly kind and you want to go on my Amazon wish list and, and get me a new tripod, I'd be most grateful. Because I can't believe I bloody broke the bloody thing. I only just bought it. 
found this really old um, Thunder Pole 3 8 quick release mount look that's never been opened never been opened never been used and that would be from well apparently from the 80s I think it's bought it in the 80s it come with all the guy that I bought them radios from blimey right then seeing as I ain't got a tripod now I'm just gonna hold this camera and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read a few more comments look some comments here now I've got one from the old Stephen Hill again it's kind of, I think it's quite an old comment, four days ago because it's been a while since I looked at the comments really uh, Hey Rusty, I'm being practical, money is not to be trifled with uh, This goes back to a bit when um, we was something going on about budgets and I was like, well I've got, what I, see what I have is I have a budget the money I, ha the money I have for fun, for bikes and, and just messing around in the garage here and doing whatever that's all the money I've got left over, I have a budget, very small budget because that's just the way it is Bills and other family things, anything else comes first obviously because you've got to pay your bills, that's the way life is um, Money is not to be trifled with, I meant having a budget would be better for you Having a, I have a budget, I said I have a budget In the comment before I said I have a budget, I've got loads of budgets Unfortunately you don't know me well enough to see that Dude you are misunderstanding, buddy mate. I've got a budget, I've got loads of budgets. When I say I don't have any money, I don't have money for the for messing around, for fun. Everybody, if you're gonna budget your money money properly, you need, and this is what I believe, this is why I do it, you need to have, you can't just spend your money willy-nilly, because then you're gonna run out of money. You need to have a budget. Now when I, every time I get paid, instantly I pay, I put a certain amount of money away for bills. Yeah, I've got everything calculated and exactly what I need to pay, right? So they're important. Once the bills are paid and the money or everything's put aside ready to pay bills and anything like that that's important, then I have whatever's left. I think to myself, well, you know, I can put this amount in the savings, my life savings, and then whatever's left after that, that's just there. That's just, I can spend it if I want to, or I can just leave it there and obviously it'll grow and that. I tend to spend it on stuff, which is why I've got loads of crap in here. Because it's just free money. I'm not just spending my money and not paying bills, so I don't know what you're on about there, Mr. Stephen, mate, but fair enough. We'll go with that. Let's have a look at another one. Pneumatic vacuum. You look pissed in this video. Yeah, pissed as an Irish donkey, mate. Well done. Uh, and we've got shpu. Not quite sure what that is, uh, how you're supposed to pronounce it, his name. Shpu, I think. How do you pronounce that? Shpu, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's have a look. So there, shpu. Uh, I like how you say they're very easy to replace. Now this is, this by the way, is going on about the parking sensors on the Jaguar. Jaguar X-Type, I did a video on parking sensors, how to replace the parking sensors. Um, it says here, I like how you say they're very easy to replace. Just pop one out and pop back in. Ha <laughs> ha. They have been on the car for years and are a nightmare to get out. First, in most cases, you have to detach the plug from the sensor, which is incredibly difficult. Then, the hard bit of releasing the sensor from the bumper and by holding apart the grips and pulling the sensor out at the same time. All this while later you're back under the car. Yes, I'm fully aware of that, dude. I've done a few parking sensors, in fact I even replaced a few on that Jag, I didn't video it, but I did. And I've done a few uh, on some vans and also some other cars, Range Rovers and things like that, something quite old. Um, never have I had any issue. Yes, you might get a corroded plug, but then you just lube it up with the lube. Um, I used WD-40, but people say, don't use WD-40 on electrics, couldn't give a shit. If it works, it works. Yes, but you can get electrical lube, yeah, fair play. Anyway, lube it up a bit. And, and you know, usually that will come unplugged. I can't see the difficulty in unplugging a sensor. Yeah, if you have, if you have a bit of trouble unplugging a sensor, you're one of these people that just likes to co complain and moan. You know, if you've got to do a job, you've got to do it no matter what. You, you just go ahead and you just do it. Although it takes a bit longer because you've got a stuck bolt or a corroded sensor in this case, you get around that. You just, you just get around the corrosion. You know, you just do it. I don't. It is, it's, it's easy anyway, the ones I done, they weren't corroded, they weren't difficult, you just unplug them, pop the sensor out, pop the new one in and plug it back in, as simple as that anyway. Ah, here we've got one, well, this made me chuckle, I've actually read this one. James Woods, such a dumbass, are you completely thick? Well, 
you reply. Thicker than you. Yep, I replied to that one. That one is on, if you remember, quite a while back, I had a Bluetooth transmitter that I unboxed and did a little, uh, kind of a review of. Now, I didn't like it, it was horrible, so I just said a load of random crap, just for fun. And, you know, because I knew that it would get views, and lo and behold, it's getting quite a lot of views. <laughs> and again, a lot of abuse about it as well, but I couldn't give a shit about the abuse, because overall, I'm getting views from it. People are sharing it around on all kinds of forums. Just like when I'd done the video on the um, CRF450, how the hot start works. Said a load of random shit and that got shared around all kinds of forums. And I got, and I got a lot of abuse, but it doesn't matter to me. But I got a lot of views out of that. Uh, racing biker, hide the crack. Yeah, not possible to be doing out now and then. Fair play, nice bike, cheers dude. This was on a video where I was, I think I was using, I was fixing the PW80 if I believe, and uh, I bent over and the old the old bum crack was poking out a little bit. Um, it ain't actually, it's just, uh, it's just where I've got a funny shape back, I think, I don't know. Anyway, that's that, very nice dude. Ah, Dave Butler. Yeah, shoot the antenna, don't waste your time, buy a Ciro Gain Master. The IMAX gives you out, gives out lots of RF calls and TV problems, the Ciro doesn't. The IMAX brings in lots of RF interference, the Ciro doesn't. I disagree, um, I've never had any issues with the old um, IMAX 2000. It must have been up maybe, I don't know, it's been up a few years now, we've not had any issues with it whatsoever. Everyone has their opinion and everyone's situation is different. You know, it all depends where you are in the world, or in the country, or wherever. High, high location, low location, what's around you. If you're in a completely open area, you're not going to get any interference, or not much anyway. Um, you know, it's all different. Um, so everyone, anyone that says a particular antenna is particularly bad for interference, or RF, or anything, it's just in that situation, in that environment. Yeah, every antenna is suited to a different environment, and a different situation. It just so happens that in this environment, in this situation, mounted to the side of my house in a quite busy little town, isn't too bad. I mean, recently some people have installed them BT routers, the BT Infinity routers, and they throw out a load of crap, and I'm getting interference from those. Um, but only those, I'm not getting any, I didn't have any interference before they installed those. It's only if I search for Wi-Fi now, every single one around, around me is BT. Anyway, that's it for the comments. There has been there has been a few more comments, but I, I replied to them anyway. I just thought I'd uh, go through a few of them and read a few out. There was a few more. 55 points. You've been on commenting. Well done, dude. And uh, but that's about that. So I think uh, I think what I'll do is the end of the day now. It's bloody late now, really. Well, it's not late. What's the time? It's only about five o'clock. But I'm gonna go and have some food. So I think tomorrow what I'll do. If I get a chance, which I should do, I think I'll uh, finish off doing this uh, this mast. Get them cutting discs cracked open and cut a bit of that off. Cut a bit more of that uh, angle out and make myself a bracket. Then all I've got to do is go and get the bolts to bolt it onto the wall. That's all I've got to do then. Sweet. Oh, this is something. Do you know what? I thought about this the other day and I thought I'd. I'd I thought I'd tell you a lot about this. Some of you may have heard, I think it's Peter Rabbit, but it might be a different old cartoon. But apparently they're remaking, um, they're remaking an old cartoon. I think it was Peter Rabbit, I'm not sure. But it's, this was on the news, on the global BBC news, by the way. Now, apparently in this, in this new uh, film, there's a character, I believe it's a human character. The facts might be wrong on that, but I know 100% sure what exactly what happens is allergic to blackberries. Now, some of the other characters decide to throw blackberries at this character. And because this character is allergic, they have they he has to, or he or she has to use an EpiPen after having some kind of allergic reaction like a fit or something. Now, people in the world have complained that, about this for some reason or another. And now the people who are making this film have had to apologise and probably going to have to change their film if they spent all that time making it. How ridiculous is that? What kind of a what kind of a country or world are we in, where people are complaining about what's in a cartoon? What's going on? If in a cartoon somebody is allergic to something and someone else wants to throw that thing at them to make them become allergic even more, that's what happens. It's a bloody cartoon. What's it all about? I don't understand. 
um, there was something else on the news about uh, was it was it in Asia? I got biscuit crumbs around my mouth. Look. Was it in Asia? There was some some really really well known program. I think it's in Asia or somewhere, another country anyway. Really well known apparently, and uh, they done a, an episode where there's some. Um, I'm sure it was Asian. Some girl was playing a black person, so she had black makeup on, um, and a fake ass. A, you know, a, a fake butter sort of thing to make her ass bigger like you know black women are renowned for a big ass really I suppose I mean I don't think so but a lot of people do anyway so now they've come under a bit of controversy and they've had to apologize and all this because everyone's complained why would someone complain if a person wants to put black makeup on and pretend to be a black person what is the difference why does it matter I do not understand I, I don't care I don't care if a black person decided to bleach his face so he became white and walked past me. I wouldn't give a shit. I'd be like, yeah, do what you want, fair enough. So the fact that people are complaining about uh, an Asian sort of person has decided to blacken themselves up and and they go on the television and now everyone's complaining. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care religion, I don't care colour, I don't care about nothing, anyone is anyone and I'll accept them for who they are, which is why I don't understand when people decide to complain when someone decides to dress up. Who cares? The world we're in now is full of people who complain and that's it, full and simple and it's only going to get worse because the society we're in, you know, someone complains and everyone just jumps on the whole bandwagon and all, they all complain as well and then people who are official have to take action and then it just snowballs and snowballs and snowballs it's just unbelievable really why can't people just get on with their lives i don't know anyway that's enough of that because i went on a bit too long about that because i don't really it's all completely pointless people need to you know people need to spend their time more wisely than sitting complaining about nothing anyway i'm gonna go and have some tea now because i'm bloody hungry so i'm gonna see you another day when i make this master thing.